Hello and welcome to a black explanation of Parker Macmillan 1 through 5. Our tale begins buried in redacted information in the library under Prehistory 1 with Parker Macmillan, batter for the Alaskan Immortals. We see that Parker has the modification profit, meaning he pays out 10 times the amount on all idle snacks. He also seems to be a good batter, so this is excellent news for fans. As a popular idol, at the end of season A, Parker is named an MVP. Then, in the season A election, the Fridays choose to hex Parker with the non-profit modification, meaning he won't pay out on idol snacks to fans of his own team. On top of this, the fireballs make him a firewalker, meaning any time he leaves a team, it will become unstable. But his popularity continues through season B, and he is named MVP once again. In the season B election, the Alaskan Immortals, clearly sick of not making money off their own batter, revoke Parker, giving him the roaming modification, meaning there's a chance he will change team at the end of a season, and he moves to the Canada Artists. Season C looks similar. He is an MVP again, and then the artists revoke him to the Oregon Psychics, giving him the on and odyssey modification, meaning he will be boosted 2% every time he joins a team. Season D follows the same pattern. He becomes a four-time MVP and is revoked by the Psychics, which makes him super roaming. Parker will now change team every nine days, and he moves to the Minneapolis Truckers. But there is a twist in the tale. The Mallorca Whales give him a force field, preventing him from moving and preventing instability from chaining to another team. But best laid plans always go awry, as on season E day nine, the truckers played against the Wyoming Dolphins, who had Megan Ito as a pitcher. Megan had the trader modification, allowing her to swap items with a player on the opposing team. She promptly swapped her broken sunglasses for Parker's force field. All this meant that Parker was able to super roam freely across season E, changing teams every nine days and leaving mass instability in his wake. Paul Parker became the bringer of death, but by day 99 was still idled enough to become an MVP for the fifth time, reaching critical mass and becoming legendary, moving to the vault and leaving the entire league unstable in his wake. This triggered a snap election, resetting baseball but also giving the Boulders Bay Birds the opportunity to re-equip Parker in the vault with the force field. And there he stayed until season 21, when we first became aware of his existence. Now knowing of him, we could also see that he was still attempting to roam every nine days, but the force field held him there. Until, after the season 23 postseason, the semi-centennial match occurred. Parker played for the Vault Legends alongside old rival New Megan Ito, who during the game took the force field from Parker, giving him the fifth base in exchange. This meant in season 24, Parker was able to leave the Vault and move between teams, both current and historical. As the entire league was consumed by Black Hole Black Hole, Parker finished the season on the Hades Tigers, where he remains as a batter during the current Grand Siesta. Nothing is known about Parker too, or even if there was one. Maybe his fate lies in the redacted prehistory too, or maybe we will never find out. Then we have Parker Macmillan III, the first Parker we encountered as fans and the intern interim Prime Minister Commissioner of Blaseball. A mostly helpful and friendly presence, if a little combative sometimes. Come season 11, Parker was promoted to Chief Executive Officer Prime Minister with the arrival of new management. As an intern, Parker was not always on the ball. As we saw through his common tweets, what, uh, oh no, and firm favorite, 
Siesta, everybody go to sleep. Parker was clearly doing his best, but not always a good job, despite the early assertions of the ticker. As most easily interactable spokesperson for the gods of baseball, Parker also caught a lot of flack, finding himself in several legal battles. The first was with the Mexico City Wild Wings legal team, who were suing the gods for defamation of brand after they were placed in the mild league. Despite not being the defendant, Parker chose to plead the fifth and then to counter sue, before, after several memorandums and spicy debates, Parker announced the case dismissed. In his final legal battle, Parker saw himself sued alongside the boss by the New York Millennials for wire fraud after Eat the Rich did not fire at the end of season 11. This case could not be so easily dismissed, and so Parker invoked his right to fair trial, choosing the renowned Sunbeams Court on Discord. However, Parker was banned from entering the Discord, so the defendant could not take the stand. In his place was a Parker simulator, which came with all the right catchphrases and initially claimed they were not guilty. But as the case wore on, the sim went rogue, citing disdain for the court. In the chaos, the court was set on fire, causing Parker's Twitter account to go dark, whilst the bot continued to spout fury until it was unplugged. This led fans to believe that Parker Macmillan III was incinerated during the trial. He was posthumously pardoned due to only being an intern and thus not responsible for the enacting of rules in Blaseball. Parker Macmillan IV replaced Parker III as Commissioner of Blaseball for a short while, before being recruited to the Real Game Band team in the Coffee Cup. For that time in Blaseball, Parker IV was a pretty solid batter, but like many of his teammates, Parker was observed and then became percolated in Game 5 of Round 1. After the Grand Siesta, Parker IV was made idle immune, preventing fans from making him their idol. However, being percolated, Parker IV was no longer able to be commissioner and was replaced. Parker Macmillan V arrived at the start of Season 12, and as things stand at the end of Season 24, has thus far survived. When he first arrived, he had the job title Intern Interim Defector Commissioner but at the time of publishing, holds the title Blazeball Commissioner, no longer an intern. Parker V carried out much the same role as Parker III, announcing news from the game and keeping track of the postseason. Having gained Parker V in Season 12, this means we met Parker's 3 through 5 before we knew anything about Parker I. But as we unredacted more information from prehistory, about Parker I and his fate, Parker V had a bad time. For about a day, his Twitter was a bit of a mess, missing party time announcements and no longer tweeting with his usual flair, before returning to a semblance of normal. Then in season 24, we saw Parker V address fans directly through the website for the first time. With the help of the microphone, Parker stood in defiance of the boss's plans, and gave fans the opportunity to take hold of their own course and to assist each other in a collaborative mission to flip the coin and keep their teams safe. Before this point, all communication from Parker had been on Twitter, but now our first message from the commissioner shows that he is doing a good job. I asked Parker for a quote to include in this video and I am glad to report he responded. So the final words on this matter will be from Parker himself. Thank you for joining me for another Blaxplanation. I'll be back with more Blaseball fun and facts soon, but until then, rejoice, play ball.